please join me in giving a very warm Notre Dame welcome to the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey. All right, I think this is on. You know, I always chuckle to myself when I hear someone um, recount some of the awards I've been blessed to receive. I, about a year ago, my staff came into my office and said, you're not going to believe this, but Time Magazine just named you as one of the 100 most influential leaders in the world. And I said, you're right, I don't believe it. And they said, well, why not? I said, because I'm not even one of the most influential people in my house. <laughs> my wife, Deanie's back there, and she'll attest to that fact. I got, uh, I want to, first of all, do, say a couple of things by way of thank you. I want to I wanna thank and congratulate my, my fellow honorees. I want to thank Father John Yu in particular for inviting me here today. I want to thank the parents. I, I don't know that uh, you're going to have to, at some point, really thank them for what they've done for you over the, well, for your whole life, but certainly <laughs> for over the last four years. So how about we start with that, and you join me. That is to say, you join me in thanking them. Way to go, parents. I, I also, I stopped in here yesterday just to see the stage and to try to figure out what, I was in, what, what they had in store for me. And this place was a mess. I mean, the weather was awful. The wind was blowing. The, you know, and, and so let me pass on my compliments and appreciation on behalf of, of you to the registrar and to the security folks and the people that have been, have been working on the sound system. It's... Pretty remarkable what they've done here over the, overnight to get this place ready for you. So how about a round of applause for them? Okay, I walked in my room day before yesterday and I had really one of the nicest notes I've ever had written for me and it was from your class leaders, the four class leaders of the class of 2016. And they welcomed me as part of your class meaning now I am part of the Notre Dame class of 2016. So, yeah, I'm, I, this is really very cool for me. I'll be at the next reunion whenever you schedule. <laughs> but the other thing I want to do is I want to get my classmates involved in the ceremony a little bit today. So I want you all to stand up for me. You probably want to warm up anyway a little bit. Now, I don't know how many of you uh, watch late night television. You're probably studying most of the time, but if you watch late night television, you know James Corden carpool karaoke, right? <laughs> he stole that idea from me, by the way. No, not really, but I actually, a couple of years ago, invented something that I call graduation karaoke. No, it's very, it's very interesting, and it'll, it's meaningful, and you're going to help me with it. And it's graduation karaoke because it goes like this. I'm going to pick three songs. I've already picked them. <laughs> One from my era and two from your era. And I'll sing the first line or the first line or two. And then you will join in and sing the next line. I don't want you to do more than that. And it would be really clever of you if you all did it together. <laughs> so the first, one, the first one is obviously from my era is you know, the, the real chairman, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> New York, New York. I'll sing the first line and you sing the second line, but don't get ahead of me. Start spreading the news. Wait for it. That was actually really well done. <laughs> okay. Now let me jump ahead a bit to your freshman year. By the way, do you know how hard it is to find a song that you can actually sing in public in a Catholic university? So I picked Drive By. I like the song Drive By. You like the song Drive By. It's not hard to sing. I'll sing the first two lines, and you'll come in at the appropriate point with the message. Ready? Here we go. Oh, I swear to you, I'll be there for you. Oh, nice. That's really good. You guys are clever, I'm telling you. All right, and then we come to this year, and you're probably wondering, uh-oh, what's he going to pick for this year? Okay, this year it's Lucas Graham, seven years, right? 
Oh, don't get sentimental on me. <laughs> All right, here we go. Once I was seven years old, my mama told me go. All right, that was a little weaker, actually. We're going to try that one again, now that you know where we're going with it. Once I was seven years old, my mama told me go. Make yourself some friends and you'll be Well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. All right, go ahead and have your seat. And by the way, there you go, right? This is, this is uh, you're leaving today. That's a fact. This is not a drive-by. You are now part of Notre Dame and will be in perpetuity. And you have managed to make yourself some friends. So with any luck at all, you won't be lonely. All right. Let me get up here. Uh, let, me, uh, let me say a few words uh, beyond the, the, the uh, graduation uh, karaoke. Which, by the way, you're probably the best uh, group that I've actually ever done that with. So now that I know you're prepared to graduate, but clearly not ready for a singing career, I will continue. You know, there's a story told of a small parish priest in a rural part of Indiana whose church was being affected by flooding and threatened. And as the waters rose, one of his parishioners in a small boat floated up to the church and called for the priest to get in the boat and save himself. But the priest said, nope, I'll be fine. The Lord will provide for me. Now, a while later, as the floodwaters continued to rise and rose eventually to the second floor, another parishioner came by in a little boat and said to the priest, for God's sakes, Father, save yourself. Get in the boat and come with us. And he said, no, I place my faith in the Lord. And later still, as the waters continued to rise and now the priest's holding on to the steeple so tightly that he won't be washed away, and another boat came by. But once again, the priest said, no, I'm not going to get into the boat. My faith will save me. Well, eventually, the floodwaters rose and washed him away, and he drowned. Now, when he got to heaven, he met St. Peter at the pearly gates. And the priest approached St. Peter, and he was a little perplexed and maybe even a little angry. And he said, you know, I had faith in the Lord. Why didn't he assist me? in my hour of need. Well, said St. Peter, we did send three boats. <laughs> you know, sometimes we sit around waiting for thunderclaps and drum rolls and clarion calls to signal us and alert us to what's important in our lives, when actually it's most often the subtle and persistent signals around us that make the most difference. Persistent signals like those around you these past four years. Words like God, country, and Notre Dame. Now, each of these has a definition, obviously. But more importantly, each of these has a profound meaning in your life. A few thoughts, and I do mean a few thoughts, about each. God. Your faith-based education has taught you and will remind you, if you allow it to do so, that it's not just what you accomplish in your life, but how you accomplish it. You leave Notre Dame understanding that the study of your faith, like your education, doesn't end today. Your faith, like your education, won't survive if left dormant. You need to remember that as daily events conspire you to forget it. I'm sure that as you prepare to leave Notre Dame, the outside world can, outside these hollowed grounds, can look seemingly complex and almost irrevocably divided. In the fourth century, St. Augustine wrote this, bad times, hard times. This is what the people are saying. But let us live well, and the time shall be good. We are the times, such as we are, such are the times. If Augustine, if Augustine was correct about that as I think he was, then we must continue to grow in our faith to be equal to the times. Country, 
As of today, you are part owners of the greatest nation on the face of the earth. I'm the grandson of four Irish immigrants and a military leader of 41 years who has served, lived, and built relationships around the world. And I report to you today that the America I know is strong and it is admired, sometimes begrudgingly, but among freedom-loving people, we remain the partner of choice. The America I know is trusted, sometimes guardedly, but among those who aspire to improve the lives of their citizens, among those who feel vulnerable, and among those who want an equal voice in a partnership, we remain the partner of choice. The America I know leads, sometimes cautiously, but always ethically. America is the world's engine, but also its conscience. We are the petri dish of diversity. To channel Sinatra once more, if humanity can make it here, it'll have a chance to make it anywhere. We're not perfect, but I believe we try harder than others to be perfect. For you to lead this country, we just don't need you to succeed. We need you to inspire. We need, these are the important words, we need you to have a warrior's heart, an immigrant's spirit, and a servant's soul. A warrior's heart, an immigrant's spirit, and a servant's soul. In describing tumultuous times in Europe just after World War I, my favorite poet, as you've heard, William Butler Yeats said, talent perceives differences, genius, unity. In our tumultuous times, we need your genius. And Notre Dame. Today you leave Our Lady's University with everything you need to be leaders of consequence wherever life takes you. Today you leave this beautiful campus armed with a diploma and an identity. You are now part of a brand that is widely recognized, that is much respected, that generates high expectations, and that represents a brother and sisterhood unlike almost any other. Yeats penned this about his own life. Say where man's glory most begins and ends, and say my glory was I had such friends. I challenge you to make each other proud in the future as you have made each other proud in the past. The end of the beginning of your education is now at hand. We can't possibly know what will come next for you. History will find some of you, but not all of you. But because you can't know which one of you history will find, you must all do your best to be ready. Be ready for God, for country, and for Notre Dame. As you continue your journey, I wish you a felt life. And as you lead lives that are felt, I offer you one last piece of advice. In 2003, I turned up in Baghdad to take command of the 1st Armored Division. And in those early days, in the period roughly between June and the end of the summer, we were mostly involved in trying to reconstruct Iraq, to give the people back some of the security and stability that they had lost during the period from March to June. And much of our work was done in humanitarian things, things like restoring sewage and water and electricity and trash. But of course, the, the groups that had been uh, turned on each other were beginning to, to organize. And by about August, there was a situation where the, those Iraqis turned on their own provisional government, and they also turned on us, as you know. And we began to take casualties beginning in about August. And of course, to recognize our casualties in the combat zone, we would conduct memorial services to help us remember the teammate that we had lost. And you've seen pictures of these services. It's usually a small wooden platform with an inverted rifle, a pair of boots, a helmet, dog tags draped over it. And we would gather at a forward operating base. And generally, we would ask the, the squad mates or teammates of the soldier we had lost to sit in the front. And a chaplain would say some words. And usually, the, the captain or the major or lieutenant colonel would say a few words. But the most poignant moments were when the teammates of the soldier who had been lost would speak. 
And usually two or three of them would come up and, and speak about their loss. And they were just heart-wrenching, but at the same, in some ways also very inspirational experiences. At the end of the ceremony, the senior leaders would always walk down the line of the teammates who had lost their comrade and look them in the eye and shake their hand and try to give them solace. And there were two emotions that were always present in those soldiers' lives. One was fear, because they knew they had to go right back out. And the other was guilt, because they knew they had lost a teammate. And they constantly asked themselves if there was something else they could have done to prevent it. And I remember the first couple of times when I went to those ceremonies, I couldn't find the words. To, I just couldn't find the words to engage with a young man or woman who had lost their teammate. And I left those ceremonies in both two or three cases, I left those ceremonies just wondering how and just how can I find the inspiration in order to know what to say to these young men and women. And then one morning in between that, that kind of spiritual period between when you're asleep and when you're awake, I found the words and Father John mentioned them. I woke up realizing that there was this phrase echoing in my head. It was make it matter. And so I went to the next ceremony when we lost a soldier, and I, walk, I simply walked up to the young men and women who had lost their teammate, and I shook their hand and looked them in the eye, and I said, make it matter. That's it. Just make it matter. And that's all I really had to say. They understood. I understood. And that phrase became the phrase that helped me organize myself for the challenges that I was facing. Since I've used that phrase over time, I, I've come to the realization the appreciation, really, that that phrase resonates and has meaning not just in the military context. That phrase, make it, makes, make it matter, is a phrase that can be applicable in any line of work that you choose throughout your life. Whatever you choose to be, if you simply decide that every day you're going to try to make it matter in some way, sometimes in small ways and sometimes in big ways, then what will happen to your life is that you'll make it matter tomorrow, and then the next day, and the day after that, and pretty soon, it'll be the sum total of your life that matters, not any individual accomplishment. And so I leave you with this thought today, class of 16. First and foremost, I'm very proud to be part of your class, and I'm very proud to be part of your class because I know we will make it matter. God bless you all. Thank you.